everybody, this is Birch. Um, I'm, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of people who know me in real life. Um, I always see these comments like, uh, Perch is like dad. He's like, oh, if you make Perch mad, I mean, oh my God, what does it take to make Perch mad? I'm a super sarcastic person. Um, and so <laughs> I think people who know me in real life know this. And I, I do enjoy those kinds of, uh, that, that kind of comedy. If you listen long enough, you can, you can kind of suss it out. But um, I, I always get in my mind that I want to do pranks uh, with the video. Like, I'm still waiting. I've never done this, but um, do an interview with somebody. And then just just turn it sideways <laughs> on them, just just for the hell of it. It would be bad because I don't want to. I always feel very um, uh, humbled and thankful when people give me their time to do an interview. So I never want to inflict somebody on that. But I, I've gotten close. I my, my closest we I did a live stream, and uh, we brought Jeff Thorne on, who's writing New Green Lantern. And I'm like the topics we're going to talk about, and I put up on the screens like, you know, what about President Trump? How about uh, the virus effectiveness? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> unfortunately, you just rolled with it. It didn't. It didn't work. Um, anyway, I, I'll keep trying. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is funny stuff I do. Anyway, and along the lines of those, um, I did a video about definitive runs, and then uh, uh, Zach did a video reaction video on my video. Uh, but I, I, I'd have this thing where, and I admit it. Like you, you, you know, people sometimes in the comment come and insult me with it. And like, you don't need to, I'll admit it myself. Uh, my videos ramble. Um, it is very much like I've talked about a stream of consciousness. It's like you're in a comic store having a conversation. My videos would do way better. And I'd have more subscribers if I actually like had notes and like had a beginning, middle and end to the video and had a thesis. But really it's like, I talk for a while. I, it, it dawns on me that I've probably been talking about five, 10 minutes. I try and wrap it up. That's the, uh, that's the, the, the mastery at work here. <laughs> on the Perch channel. That's what we're doing. So anyway, this is my reaction video to his reaction video, and I'm hoping that he'll do a reaction video to my reaction to his reaction. We could just keep this going forever. I think that would be, that's what YouTube and uh, the comic, uh, that's what people deserve, is is kind of this, these kinds of shenanigans. Um, anyway, uh, his video helped me, I think, frame up uh, a couple more thoughts on runs and definitive runs. And I think... Um, I think that here's a couple things for me, and and he said it, and I'll say it too. I we completely agree. I think this is uh, subjective. You know, I think there's there's no clear definition. I'm always a little leery. You know, you look sideways at people who who uh, want to say this is the one and only way it means. I think it's a little bit up to your interpretation, uh, but I think there's a couple things in play here. And one is you have a run of a comic, and I think a run in a comic is some. Some you could you could define it a couple, a couple different ways. You can have a, a creator run on a comic, and this would be say Chris Claremont comes in and he does uh, a bunch of X Men comics, and that is the, the Claremont run. You know, if you go into a store and say I'm interested in comics from the Claremont run, you're just, you're saying I want comics from you know this issue to that issue of Claremont's time on the X Men. Typically speaking, um, if you're say Frank Miller and you do a run on Daredevil, and then you leave, and you come back, and you do another run on Daredevil, it is another run. If you're, if you're basing it on the creator, it's a second run. It's a second length of time on a title. Um, by the way, everything makes more sense from, say, 2012 before, and, and earlier. If, and I'll, I'll explain why. From 2012 on, a lot of what I'm saying starts to break down completely. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. He kind of did in his video, and I agree with him on that topic. But anyway, you have this, uh, you have this idea of a uh, creator-owned run. And then you have a, a character or a title run. And a title run might be something like, hey, I want that first volume of New Warriors. Or I want that first volume of Amazing Spider-Man. or I want, and, and this is, again, where because they've been rebooting the comics and, and consistently relaunching them, the whole thing has gotten kind of weird. And you don't see people say, oh, I'm looking for that, uh, you know, that New Mutants run. It doesn't, it doesn't make much sense anymore when you have multiple starts and stops and people will say, I want the, uh, they'll go back to the creator or like, I want the the second volume of New Mutants. The, the kind of word volume is starting to replace runs. And I think a lot of why is because, you know, you're, you're I mean, hell, if you're, if you're what, what Captain Marvel volume are on, we're on volume seven or eight. I, I don't know. Or it just, it gets to be silly after a while. So it's like, I'd like the Captain Marvel run. Well, which one? Well, the one that was uh, not written by the guy. I'm like, okay, which one? Uh, well, the one that was, uh, you know, successful. I'm like, oh, and we're out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we're, that's that's kind of the idea. Is it is it runs 
can be that. Now, definitive runs, which is what I was talking about in the other video, uh, definitive runs are, that's interesting. And I think because, once again, there's there's defi there's defining character moments, which is really not a run. It's a, it's a defining character moment. This is where I used the example before of The Vision by Tom King had defining character moments. It, it changed the character. It changed the, the whole mode of how the character was. Uh, but it's, you know, would you call that a run? It's a little bit weird to call it a run. I, I think, I don't know that, can you call a 12 issue maxi series a run? I mean, in theory, you can call anything uh, a run if you, if you choose to, it's, it's just, it's a signifier of, of time, but really uh, the, the idea of, of a defining, you know, it, it, the word run is probably the wrong word. If you say, well, okay, what are the defining moments, the defining comics in, say, The Vision, and you'd go back to The Avengers when The, Avengers, when the Vision was first formed, and you'd go back to the, the time when The Vision tried to take over the planet, you you go to John Byrne's West Coast Avengers where they disassembled him, you'd go to, um, I don't know, there, there's just a handful of things you'd, you'd do with The Vision, um, and you'd, you'd, you'd include probably Tom King's Vision 12 series in there, but, but is that really a defining run? And then to make matters more complicated, if you're talking about a defining run and you say, hey, I, I'm, you know, I'm looking for the defining Chris Claremont. I'm defining Chris Claremont's defining run on the X-Men. You, you probably wouldn't say, well, you're going to need like uh, 200 issues of the X-Men. You would say these issues, this set is the defining Claremont moment on this title. But then you're not talking about you know, a defining X-Men run. You're talking about a defining Claremont run. And so it, anyway, it, it, it gets all complicated. I guess the, the point here is that you can start to kind of separate these things out. And it's an interesting topic. And it's one, man, I'd like to just spend a lot more time debating and talking about because that is kind of, well, here's two points that I think probably deserve their own time. But one, I mentioned before, since 2012, things broke down a little bit. What broke down? Well, Comics are getting rebooted and relaunched all the time. The contracts of creators are are getting shorter. You know, I do uh, I do an interview with Bill Loves. We're talking about uh, his his runs on uh, the Flash and on Wonder Woman, and we're talking like five year runs in some cases. We're talking about you know fifty plus issues, and that's that that is truly a, a I mean, if today those don't exist unless you're talking about an indie comic where the person has control, but in, in Marvel, you just don't have those anymore. Uh, you know, there's a lot of noise being made about, you know, Jason Aaron's defining uh, work on Thor, but his work on Thor equals, you know, multiple series. We're talking at least four to five, you know, rebooted series during that course of, of events, lots of different artists in that mix. So it's just since 2012, is happening a little bit before that. This whole concept is now pretty dodgy. I mean, what what's a run on anything? And and I think you can kind of debate is the right answer that we we just lower the bar. Um, that you know, a, hey, a, a run on a comic can be three issues because that's, that's that's as long. What's the defining uh, future foundation <laughs> run of that? What is it? Did that make it to four issues or is that just three issues? I mean, like, what do you? What's your uh, World of Wakanda defining run? I, that comic went two issues, right? I mean, like, you know, what <laughs> what, what do you have? And that's just a way that the, the world is just different uh, now and, uh, and pretty pathetic, actually, if you think about it. Um, the other kind of, the, the topic I'd, I'd love to just either just sit and listen to, meaning other people can do videos and I will happily just consume them like crazy or talk with others about it is, uh, how many defining character moments are we getting? Because I don't know that we're getting many anymore. Um, it feels like these days the kind of the defining character moments are intended to kind of just reinforce the IP or go for a very short sales bump that really doesn't matter anymore. And and to 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 the point, if you're looking at the Avengers right now, you're looking at Jason Aaron's uh, run on the Avengers. Um, what, what defining character moments are we getting there of any, we'll go down the list. Black Panther is the leader of the Avengers in theory. Cool moment should be interesting seeing him, how, how his styles, particularly with his history with the Avengers, 
have there been any Black Panther defining moments? Have there been any kind of major changes to that character, things that characters learn? Are comics going to be written 20 years from now, uh, tying back to this moment? I mean, think about it. Tony Stark had his uh, battle with alcoholism back in the 80s, late 70s, 80s. And they're still referencing that moment. They're still making stories off of it. You know, they're, they're still building from that. Uh, the Tanahishi Coates Captain America run is taking a lot from Captain America's disillusionment with uh, the government back when Nixon was uh, revealed to be evil. I mean, just kind of these different moments. What's, what in Jason Aaron's Avengers run is going to be referenced 20 years from now? The, the BC Avengers that somebody will remember those exist. I mean, you can go down the line. Black Panther's leader. Captain Marvel's on that team. Has, has Captain Marvel had any moments? Has Captain America has any moments? Has the Iron Man? The Iron Man learned that maybe his dad was hanging out with uh, Mephisto back in the day. Okay. I mean, is that is that going to stick? I, ugh. Ghost Rider? Robbie Reese? Is he, does he have anything going on? She-Hulk? Where, you know, Blade is in there? Like, what what... What is being created? So what are the defining moments today? And frankly, are the publishers even trying to make defining moments? I mean, that's that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is I'm not even sure anybody's really shooting for that goal. It's more just putting the comics out. And and so does the concept of, of a comic run or a defining moment or any of that stuff, does that even, does that matter at all anymore? I'm not sure it does. I think it, it feels like we're in a very different place. But what's curious about it is it, you, you see fans clearly hungry for this. I think that in time we're going to be talking about the Hickman run on uh, X-Men. But when they say that, they're going to be more referring to the whole Hickman era. They're going, to, they're going to be talking about a lot of comics that, frankly, Hickman didn't do. You know, are people going to be saying, you know, that, that Hickman defining run House of X, Powers of Ten, twelve issues. I don't think so. It doesn't sound right to me. I'm with uh, I'm with Zach there. Did like I don't think you can put twelve issues together and it makes any sense. So, what you know, what where where are we with that stuff? Um, it just feels like we're dealing with a very very different uh, world now. And if you think about kind of how comics uh, certainly were in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, both with either defining creator runs which would lead to other work or defining character moments that would go on to spawn, you know, lots of other things. I'm not sure any of that stuff's really being created now. It's all far disposable, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm forgetting something. Let me know in the comments below. What am I forgetting? Some car alarm is just going nuts out here. Just, I, you know, nobody's paying attention. That guy could be robbing that car blind. Nobody would know. Maybe I'll get in there and, and grab myself a new radio. Anyway, uh, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for listening.